All right, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making a steady rest for my lathe. Alright, so I need to make a steady rest for my lathe because I'm currently in the process of making my biggest project to date, which I'm very excited about, which is a hallway table. So if you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe so you can follow along with that project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wood turn four long legs. I've actually got the planks over here. I'm using some lovely curly maple and I've got some Paduk socks on the end of it. I've got this nice compound mitre on the end uh, and it's quite a complicated blank. Some would say segmented, others would say no. But it should look very nice once it's turned. And I'm also on one of the legs hand carving these leaves uh, which will spiral up one of the legs and it'll look like a pillar which uh, I think will look very cool. So obviously I need to make a steady rest because actually let me explain it. Alright, so I actually need to get an extension bed on this lathe because obviously the spindle blank is too long. When you have a very long thin piece on the lathe uh, that is only supported by the ends, it is very easy for it to vibrate and start wobbling in the middle like this. And if you're using a scraper or any tool really in the middle and you're pushing in, it will chatter and vibrate and it won't leave a nice finish. So you need some sort of jig in the middle keeping the spindle very true and uh, in line with the headstock and tailstock. And that jig normally looks like a donut shape with uh, three wheels which pinch around the spindle so obviously the spindle can still turn and those wheels are normally on track so then you can adjust it so that you can use that jig for multiple projects and you can adjust it depending on how big uh, the leg is going to be or if you turn it down you can then move the wheels in closer to the piece so it's constantly supporting it but yeah it's a very valuable uh, jig to have in the shop so I've been meaning to make one for a while and because I'm doing this project I sort of need to now so uh, so I'm looking forward to getting it all finished all right so what I've done already is drawn out a rough shape of what I want the steady rest to look like I've just drawn two circles and I got the measurement from the center of the chuck to the lathe bed and I drew that line from the middle of the circle down and then I created the flat. So that's where the lathe bed will be. I'll make some sort of locking system to clamp it onto the bed. But for the moment, I'll just cut out this shape on the bandsaw and then we'll go from there. So what I've done is I've cut the uh, center circle out on the scroll saw. Now of course I got a bit of a wobbly line from the scroll saw, which is annoying. I don't have a bobbin sander and that would be the perfect tool to sand the inside and get that perfectly round. Uh, but I don't have that. I might need to get one in the future. I'm just going to have to put up with a bit of a wobbly line in the middle. It won't affect the performance of it at all, it's just the aesthetics. Hopefully looking at it won't put me off my work. <laughs> Alright, so now what I'm going to do is going to make the sliding carriage to fit on the lathe bed. I 
Alright, so it's pretty simple. I've cut out this shape which will go on top of the bed and I cut this strip on the bandsaw and then just sanded it on the edge sander and that will be the little bit that slides nicely in between the two tracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw that onto the base like that. I probably won't glue it because if, I want, if it cracks or moves and I want to switch it out later, it'll be easy to change around. So I'm going to put three screws in and let's go from there. All right, so now what I've done, if I move this out of the way, I can explain it a bit better. So I cut another strip of ash and that will go into this slot here. So this component that I made will go on top. And what I think I'm going to do is either do some sort of nut and bolt locking system. Ideally, I would like to have a bolt with a wing nut on top so I can tighten it uh, like that. So I can pinch this in between that bit there. But I do not have a bolt in wing nut. So I might just use any bolt I can find in the toolbox. Alright, so it's going very well. I really hope this locking mechanism lasts a long time. The thread is in wood, so it probably won't last a long time, but it'll be a good experiment. But it seems to work really well. If I tighten these screws, it lifts that bottom plate up and pinches it between the tracks, like that. And I can't move it at all, so very happy with how it's locked down. Alright, let's keep going. Alright, so just to bring you up to date with where I am, I've screwed the wheels onto the wooden tracks. Now, there's not a lot of information out there on what wheels to use for a wood turning steady, and that's probably because you can pretty much use any wheel you like. You can even use a bearing if you want. Common ones are roller skate wheels, scooter wheels. I would recommend roller skate wheels because uh, the outside is rubber and it won't damage or mark the wood. I bought a pack of eight from Amazon for about 15 pounds I think so I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check these out I like these ones because it has a plastic sort of washer on the inside So all I had to do is screw it into the wood and there's uh, there's a washer here So it won't stop the wheel from turning other ones just come with a bearing so you might need to buy uh, Some more bolts with washers or come up with something to attach it to the wood and still let it uh, turn and I'm not good with that stuff so I like this option with the plastic sleeve so all I need to do is put a screw in and the head of the screw is what keeps it in place.
All right, so normally with wood turning steadies, um, there is a groove cut into the donut or a mortise uh, which these tracks can slot into and uh, ride in. But I didn't really want to do that because that would take a long time and I'm pretty sure it would actually weaken uh, the donut shape because if you're removing material then obviously it gets thinner and you want a wood turning steady to be as strong and rigid as possible. So I came up with uh, an easier method which was to make these blocks that I cut on the band saw and all I did was screw them either side of the track and now they have a nice slot for them to go in and they move nicely in and out. All right, so the way I attach the tracks onto the steady base is I bought these uh, hex bolts uh, with a wing nut. I wanted to use a wing nut because then uh, the tightening process will be uh, tallest and I wouldn't need to get a spanner. So I cut a slot into the track that the shank of the bolt can go in, uh, but there's also a recess that the head of the bolt will have something to pinch when uh, it tightens. So I put the bolt into the track, feed it through the hole in the base and on the other side I'll put a washer and then the wing nut is what I'll use to tighten it. So now the steady rest is all pretty much glued up. I've added in some screws and that should give uh, a lot of added strength. Now before obviously showing you the steady rest, I wanted to test it and use it to make sure it actually worked well. And it did work well. I managed to turn this leg, uh, which is the first leg of the hallway table. And I'm very happy with how it's come out. But there was one thing I wanted to change on the steady rest, and that was tightening it to the lathe bed. The Allen key bolts were just too fiddly and it was too time consuming to move it up and down. Uh, and also over time, the wooden thread will probably wear out. So what I did was I just drilled out those holes a bit bigger and I had two spare hex bolts with a wing nut on it. And this is what I'm gonna use to now tighten it to the lathe. Now, this is probably dry now. I glued this up last night. This was the existing base that went onto the bottom to clamp it. So all I've done is cut some wooden blocks and that should hold the bolt in securely so when I tighten it, it won't turn. All right, so this is my first time putting it on the lathe with the new locking system. So all I need to do is feed it in through the bottom, put the bolts in place, put the washers on, all right, so that looks very easy to tighten now. It involves no tools, just the wing nut. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. And it locks down very securely. Can't move it at all, which is brilliant. So that is the steady rest done. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, the reason I made the steady rest is because I'm currently working on a new project, which is a hallway table. Uh, I've already started. I've turned one leg that I showed you earlier and I'm very happy with how that turned out. So once I complete the whole project, I'll upload those videos. I can't wait to show you. So if you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Also, if you're already subscribed, make sure you turn the post notifications on so then you get notified when I upload new videos. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like. If you've got any questions about the steady rest or you just want to chat, comment down below. I will reply to all your comments. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. I'd like to love you, love you. I'd like to love you, love you. I'd like to love you night and day, if I may, may, may.